Hello everyone and welcome to this time of praising God together at the United Methodist Church of Palm Springs. My name is Jim Bullock and I'll be your host today. As we start to wrap up life in September, we're also wrapping up our sermon series for the month, a series we've been calling Discovering Our Sacred Stories. We've been looking at the ancient stories of the lives of some of our most iconic Old Testament characters and finding in their experiences wonderful hints for a better understanding of the story of our own lives and especially our life with God. It's amazing how a resource like the Bible, something so old, sheds such profound light on today, on the new. And speaking of old, that's the subject as, we, as we're seeking 21st century enlightenment. And what I mean to say is that worship today centers around the character of Sarah, Abram's wife. We only know her as someone who is old. She and Abraham came into the biblical story when they are quite advanced in years. And oh boy. <laughs> Does God at that stage of their lives take them on a most incredible adventure? Well, what might that tell us about what we can look forward to as we journey into and through our sunset years? Well, Paul Nixon explores that with us today. So, make yourself at home and share your name in the comment section below and you can welcome others who are worshiping with us, with, with all of us, wherever they are and wherever you may be. And also share with one another a favorite character from a book or a movie or a TV show that you find especially helpful in your journey. We're so glad that you're here with us, um, joining us for this, this service of worship at the United Methodist Church in Palm Springs. I'm Paul Nixon, and I'll be bringing the message today. Um, this is the fourth and final part of our series, looking at sacred stories, um, stories in the Bible that really are as much about us as they are about the characters involved. And um, I hope that today, as we think about the spirituality of our later years, I hope that it inspires you. Even if you're not yet in what you would consider your later years, we're all headed that direction. I just turned 60, and um, I'm thinking a lot about that. One thing I will say before we pray is that this church teaches me an awful lot about how to live the later years really, really well. And that mentoring, to me, is one of the reasons that I love this congregation. Let's pray together. Gracious God, we thank you that even as we get older, you are with us day by day, um, opening us up to new insights, to new opportunities, 
to saving some of the very best for late in our lives. We know that um, within our circle, there are those that are suffering this week. There are those that are discouraged. There are those for whom advanced years have become a burden and a challenge. We pray for your grace um, to help us to discover um, to discover the sunlight and the possibilities and the opportunities. At whatever place we find ourselves, no matter how limited, no matter how um, um, constrained, um, no matter how different than the way we remember the world being, Lord, help us to embrace the beauty of the moment in which you've called us to live. Um, and we thank you. And we want to pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now our scripture, as we discover the story of Sarah um, and her big surprise at the age of 90. The scripture reading today is from Genesis 18, verses 1 through 2 and 9 through 14. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of the Mambre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. They said to him, where is your wife, Sarah? And he said, there in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season and your wife, Sarah, shall have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind them now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed at herself saying, after I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I be fruitful? The Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the time set at the set time I will return to you in due season and Sarah will have a son. Our culture has shall we say an awkward relationship with aging. We live in the shadow of Mount San Jacinto and also the shadow of the of the whole LA entertainment um, culture and people sometimes peak out in the entertainment business in their mid-twenties. And beyond entertainment, we know that there's a lot of folks who um, find themselves peaked out in terms of progressing in industry um, in their fifties. And it, if you're 61 years old and a recession hits and you're laid off, good luck, because we have a bias toward youth. And there's lots of reasons for that. Now, there are exceptions where there are tenure systems, sometimes the bias goes the other direction, but that's not the norm for most folks in the United States. Um, many older people are really underwhelmed with all of the improvements of technology and digital platforms. I snoozed through a tutorial on Salesforce this week for a team that I'm working with, um, knowing that I would never use 98% of any of that. Um, I have other well-proven ways to organize my life and to communicate with colleagues. Um, many older people have been around the block a few times and whatever new great idea comes along in the office, it's sort of like, we remember when we tried something very much like that and we also remember when it bombed. And so it's easy to write off older folk as techno dinosaurs or to write us off as negative. Sometimes we have less stamina physically not always. There's, there, there's always that older person who can run circles around a 20-year-old in terms of energy, even if they are comatose in their hot tub after hours. Um, 
Older folk can be emotionally resilient. They can bring wisdom and mentoring. But the fact is that a lot of times, the way the world is put together, we even discount ourselves in terms of our value after we move beyond our professional years. But seriously, after 40 plus years and a certain professional routine, a lot of us really sense a need to shift to a different kind of engagement, to something more interesting. And there comes a point for a lot of us, not all of us, but a lot of us when we're just content to let younger people get on the hamster wheel and make some money and allow us to move on to something that might be more life-giving. Many folks in our church have discovered in their 70s, their 80s, even into their 90s, that life can be a barrel of fun, even if it's different in those years than it used to be. The Bible is full of stories. History is full of stories of older people that we would expect to be slowing down, maybe coasting toward the end of their lives, who found surprising, joyful, profound, and meaningful purpose in the later chapters. Moses, we remember him three weeks ago. We talked about him as he encountered a burning bush that changed his life and propelled him into the work of his life at the ripe old age of 80. Carrie Allen in our church was a physician, um, is a physician, had a practice going for many years, but shifted into a different kind of work. Um, moving more into a holistic work and then really developing hospital chaplaincy at Desert Regional Hospital in the last two decades. John Jones in our church, he taught school for a career, but today he runs a kitchen and helps our church to feed the marginalized um, neighbors who sometimes have nothing to eat. Several folks in our church are involved in the Changemaker Initiative. The Changemaker Initiative is exploring what we can do, especially in the middle of life and that transitional season, what we can do to get around to the things that we always wanted to get around to, to bless others, to make a difference, a positive difference in the world. That opportunity comes for many only because they've retired and are, and are able to um, get a social security check and, and a retirement that enables them to do some things that they otherwise couldn't afford to do. And they have a b blast um, doing that. I have a friend named Gary. He's a few years older than me. And he was really good at what he did at his craft for 45 years. But he was burned out. It was time for something else. And so he retired. He has not looked back one day. Um, and in his retirement, he has created a studio in his home and he's now a working artist, and he's getting good. He's getting really good. He's painting with different kinds of media. He's illustrating children's books, getting published. I mean, he's fantastic. Having more fun than he ever had in his regular career, discovering um, a way to really align who he is with, um, with life and in ways that make his heart sing. And did I mention that he's also developing arthritis in his hands? Yes, that's the, the weird dance that we do as we discover new sense of purpose and possibilities in our older years. We also often discover um, challenges that um, make it interesting how we can continue to do the things we love. My mother, um, my mother's 84, and she retired early at the age of 60 from um, being a rehabilitation counselor, helping people who had had accidents to get trained so they could work, take care of themselves. Um, but she retired, was able to do that, was blessed to do that, and began several different things during the next quarter century, a lot of travel, a lot of time with, with grandkids, and then great grandkids. She was still throwing a football after Thanksgiving past the age of 80 um, in their backyard. But her real 
thing that she lived into in the retirement years was that she became a Bible teacher. Now, she had done some of that before, but it really became her main piece. And not only the Bible teaching in her church, but visiting folks, she really became a lay pastor to scores and scores of people. But you know, the years go by, and scores and scores of people pass on to the next world. And she ran out of people. Today, she's um, playing her piano an hour a day. She reads a couple novels a week. Her phone is a switchboard between family members, and she is definitely the, the wise and matriarchal presence in the family. But I think her new frontier is prayer. Again, this has been something important to her through her life, but now there's space where she just spends a lot of time in contemplation, a lot of time quiet, and a lot of time praying for people she doesn't even know and watching and discovering amazing things happening um, in that conversation. Getting old. It is a trip. In today's Bible passage, we meet an old woman named Sarah. We met her last week, actually. Remember, she was the, the woman who picked out Hagar, who she subbed in to carry a baby on her behalf. Um, Sarah was unable to bear children. God had promised Abraham, who was married to Sarah, that he would become an amazing, mighty nation, but they had no kids. And so um, Hagar was brought in to have the child. That created, what shall we say, a awkward family dynamic, okay? And both Hagar and Sarah behaved awkwardly at times as they were working through all of that. Um, Now, if Sarah literally was 90 when her son was born, Isaac, then she would have been around 76 when when Hagar's son Ishmael was born. And and, you know, the ages are hard to, to take literally, but suffice it to say this, when Sarah reached menopause, she and Abraham realized that plan A was not going to work. Plan A being that they were going to have a baby the way that people usually have babies and that, she, and that, and that the, um, the lineage of the great nation that God had promised was going to come from that. So then plan B involved her choosing Hagar. Now, in today's story, the, Hagar's son, Ishmael, is now becoming a young man and these three strangers come along, angels, and they have yet a plan C. And plan C is is that now at Sarah's very, very old age, she is going to actually have the baby that God had promised way back. And so what does she do? What would you do if, if three strangers walked in with such a cockamamie story as that? You would laugh. And she laughed and laughed because it's laughable. She later denied it because she did not want to be associated with that response like she was lacking faith or something. But she's never escaped it. For 4,000 years, we're still remembering her first response when she heard this news was she just died in laughter. But more important than Sarah's response, I would like for us to focus this morning on the angel's response to her. When she asked, how on earth could such a ridiculous thing happen to me at this point in my life? And their answer is the thing I want you to take home from this worship time today. This is what the angel said back to her. They said, is anything too wonderful for the Lord? This late life adventure, this surprise, it was not for Sarah's benefit, really. It was for God's purposes. And is anything too crazy wonderful when God's involved? Wonderful is an interesting word, full of wonder. But full of wonder in a good way, like a really good way. I mean, there are things that fill me with wonder in a not-so-good way, a a kind of um, things of the WTF variety. But this is not that kind of thing. 
The wonderful is off the charts. Good. It's like a kid going to Disneyland. Good. Is anything too wonderful when it comes to God? We are so prone to focus on the, the glass half empty or the challenges when it comes to aging because we remember the things we used to could do that we can't quite do. We, it's the physical challenges. We remember the, we, we have loss of community as people move away or they die. There's the technology thing leaving us stranded in 1995. We may feel like we live in a foreign country at times because the world just changed and changed and changed. We can lose professional identity. Our kids behave in maddening ways. They get a divorce. We can't see our grandkids as easily as we should. And then, and then the longer we live, there's just the sheer cost of stuff. It gets expensive and it takes money and it can get scary. And yet, is anything too wonderful for the Lord? A couple of verses that I want to add into the mix here. First, from Psalm 34, 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in God. And one more from Isaiah 43, verse 18. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not see it? I will make a way in the wilderness and I will cause rivers to flow in the desert. Sarah's big moment came late in the game. For us, it may not be that the big moment in life comes late in the game, but there's great moments at every season and every part of the game. And it's really easy for us to want to compare where we are right now with where we used to be and what we used to do. But God is saying through the prophet Isaiah, forget about what you used to do. You're not even that person anymore. You all have probably heard that about every seven years, we literally, every molecule changes out. We are literally brand new stuff. So, I challenge you, turn the page. Don't look back. Live boldly into the chapter that is before you. And the person in those earlier chapters, that's not really even you anymore. God has given you this moment to live. Live into it. And be willing to be open to the possibility that God may use you in ways to bless in these days that are just absolutely wonderful. It is important for all of us not to sentimentalize our past because when we do that, we only hurt ourselves in the present. Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? I close with this question. What, what do you most long for as you grow older? What is the desire of your heart? I mean, as we grow old, um, there are so many variables that we can't predict. We can't predict what our health will be. We can't predict um, what, how long our mind stays crisp. There's so many things that are out of our control. But more and more of us are going to be living into our late 80s and into our 90s. And what do you most long for? in this season of life. It may not happen the way that you imagine it, but would you be willing to, to, to claim that dream and to hold on to it before God? What kind of purpose, what kind of community, what kind of friends, what kind of time with family? Do you need a fresh start? Would you, would you dare 
to start a new hobby or to learn a new skill. Whatever it is for you, I want you to claim that verse that the angels gave to Sarah. And I want you to take it with you today. Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises, standing on the promises, standing on the promises of God my Savior. Standing on the promises, standing on the promises. I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises that cannot fail. When the howling storms of doubt and fear assail, by the living word of God I shall prevail. Standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises, standing on the promises, standing on the promises of God my Savior. Standing on the promises, standing on the promises. I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises that cannot fall. Listening every moment to the Spirit's call. Resting in my Savior as my all in all. Standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises. Standing on the promises. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing on the promises. Standing on the promises. I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises. Standing on the promises. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing on the promises. Standing on the promises. I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing on the promises. Standing on the promises of God. It is our great joy to give thanks to all that God is doing in our lives and through our congregation to help others, especially for the many residents of the community in their golden years. And if you would like to make a financial gift to the church, there are three ways you can do that. You can write a check and pop it in the mail, or you can drop it by the church office, or you can make an offering online or via text. The information about how to do all of that is on the screen right now. So thank you very much. We hope you have a very good week in the days ahead. Um, a couple of things we'd like for you to, to remember as we go from this time. This evening, if you were viewing this on Sunday, um, this evening, on Sunday evening, the 25th of, of September, um, our church is sponsoring one of the films at Cinema Diverse. It's a film entitled Not a Tame Lion. It is a, fi a film that is, has a deep faith connection and we're excited to, um, to be the sponsors of that particular film. And it's going to be at Palm Springs Cultural Center tonight and you can get tickets this afternoon. You can go online and, um, and nail some down if there's still some available. We hope to see you there. Also, on the 22nd of October, which is a Saturday night, we are going to have a big party in the middle of the church's 60th anniversary month. The party is um, going to be all about the 1960s. It's going to be a dinner, a dance, there's going to be mocktails, um, there's going to be friends from old times. It's going to be fabulous. And if you would like to be a part of that dinner, we do need to take reservations. And what I would just say is give the church office a call, or you can send an email to Pam in the office and she'll get back with you. And um, the, the cost of the meal is 35 bucks, and it's, it covers everything the whole evening. It's going to be a fabulous time. We hope you can be there. As we go from this place, may we go in the in the full faith that God is not done with any of us and that the, the best and most beautiful things of our lives may be just in the days ahead. God bless each of you.
Amen.